Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Now when you hear the term survival kit, probably one of the first things that you think of is going to be a bug out bag, which of course is a larger survival kit that's meant to keep you alive for three days while you get to a safer area. The main problem with these is since they do tend to be large, they spend a lot of time stored in something like a closet in your house. So if you experience a situation away from your home, they're not gonna do you any good. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at my EDC slash get home bag, going over the bag itself and of course all the stuff inside of it. And the thing to keep in mind is that this is not meant to be a long-term wilderness survival kit. I rarely get more than eight miles from home. I live in a fairly suburban area. I just wanted something fairly lightweight. Most of the time this will weigh around 20 pounds unless I load it down with extra things like my laptop, but that'll allow me to get back home or get to my son's daycare as quickly as possible and have everything that I would need to keep myself well and then also deal with any obstacles that may get in my way. The bag itself is the Vertex Ready Pack 3 and one thing I like about it is that it sucks everything in close to your body. I've had other bags that they're just kind of floppy and so they're easy to get hung up on things and it also doesn't really help you carry that weight. The bag has two larger compartments along with a couple of smaller ones and we'll go over those later in the video. It also has a compartment in the back which can accommodate a ballistic panel. The panel is a level 3A from Premier Body Armor so I'd like to thank them for sending that panel as well as this bag and for sponsoring this video. That being said this is a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a while now the concept of kind of a, a rapid get home bag and this was just a good excuse to do that. This ballistic panel is mainly designed to stop pistol rounds like 9mm all the way up to 44 Magnum although it can stop some other things like double up buckshot but it is not rated for rifle rounds. Most soft armor that you'll see like this isn't but statistically you are more likely to face threats from handguns so that's going to have you covered from most of the things that you're likely to face. And I think having that sort of protection is very important, especially if you're using this in an urban environment as an EDC bag, because really a ballistic panel in a bag is probably the most practical way to have some sort of ballistic protection with you. You can check out Premier Body Armor in the link in the description below, and you can also get a 10% discount using either that link or the coupon code DIY. The back compartment also has Velcro lining so you can add different kinds of accessories, and the Velcro is compatible with both Vertex accessories as well as those offered by other manufacturers. The holster that I have in here is Maxpedition's Universal Holster. And normally I do carry on body, but sometimes it's just nice to have the option to be able to store your gun away in a backpack and you know it's safe, you know the trigger's covered up, so you're not gonna have any accidents. The back compartment also works well to hold things like ponchos. You just wanna be careful putting other stuff back there if you have a gun in there because you wanna be able to access it and you know make sure it doesn't get wrapped up and stuff. But my poncho, it's the military style one by USGI. And in addition to being a poncho, you can also set it up as a makeshift shelter if necessary. Now, other than those compartments, it doesn't have a whole lot of extra things like pen or pencil holders or a lot of little small zipper pouches within, although there is one zipper pouch in the main compartment. But it does have a lot of like Velcro and Molly where you can mount different kinds of pouches and accessories. Some people, they're really gonna like that they can customize the bag exactly how they want it, while others probably aren't gonna wanna spend the extra money to get extra pouches to set it up the way that they want it. That's just something to know about the bag. It's just kind of a give and take thing. But one thing I do really like about the bag is that it doesn't stick out at all. It doesn't have a military style look to it. It just looks like a normal plain Jane backpack, which is really what I go for. I try to be the gray man whenever possible and this bag helps with that. It also has a chest strap along with a stowaway waist belt, a top carry handle, and a carry handle that can be used, I guess, if somebody needs to drag you like that, it's pretty easy to get a hold of. And there's also a pass-through compartment here where you could hold on to the bag if you needed to use it kind of as a shield or something like that. Now getting into the actual stuff in the bag, starting on the outside, I have the Grail Ultra Press. And Grail purifiers, they are a very good option in an urban environment because like backcountry filters, like sawyers, they will remove, you know, bacteria, protozoa, sediment, and microplastics, but they'll also do some things that those other filters won't. Like they can remove viruses, they can also remove a lot of chemicals, 
And those are contaminants that you could be dealing with in an urban environment that you might not be dealing with 30 miles deep into the woods. I had to get this one because the GeoPress is too big to fit inside of these pockets. Uh, earlier in the video, I mentioned that this is designed to keep everything close to your body and the, the bottle compartments on the side are no exception. So you're not gonna be able to put anything too big in here. Another thing that I keep over here is just a regular water bottle. I kind of rotate through this. I use them daily. And yes, I know a steel water bottle would be a better choice, but my steel water bottle, like with the GeoPress, won't fit. I'd already spent money on this and I was kind of broke, so for now, it's just gonna be a regular water bottle. So getting into the main compartment, it does have a laptop sleeve, which will accommodate up to at least a 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I don't carry that with me all the time. It's just nice to have that option if I wanna go work somewhere away from the house. And then also, the little retention strap, it is adjustable because the back of that panel is Velcro lined. The main compartment also has a small zipper pouch, and right now I'm using that to hold some cold weather gear, like my hat and my face mask. And I added an additional pouch, which is attached to the PAX Velcro lining, and this is mainly gonna be my tech pocket. That's where I'm gonna keep my laptop charger when I need it, things like phone chargers, battery banks for cell phones, and stuff like that. Then also have some other items at the bottom of that compartment, like some extra socks, some cold weather gloves, a trash bag and some work gloves just to protect my hands if I'm having to move some like sharp or hot objects. And I'll also be keeping a dust mask inside as well. The second compartment's gonna be where I keep most of my survival gear. And you'll see that it has a nice size Molly slash Velcro panel where you can add different kinds of accessories. One of them is the Vertex Tactigami Max Standard. It's just an adjustable pouch that you can use to hold different kinds of things. And then also I have a Maxpedition fatty pocket organizer on the outside. I have a pencil and a pen, but inside I have my multi-tool. I also have some fire starting tools like a ferro rod with a striker, a lighter, then some Vaseline cotton balls. I also have a headlamp, a small flashlight, and then some spare batteries. They both take AAA, so that makes that real easy. I have a Silcock key for operating faucets on the outside of commercial buildings because that is a very important tool to have if you're in an urban or suburban area. I have a write in the rain pad in case I need to write some notes or drop some breadcrumbs along with a small emergency blanket. I have some zip ties for making repairs a compass. I don't have a map because I'm pretty familiar with this area, although I probably do need to add one. I also have duct tape, which has like a billion survival uses, along with a pretty good decent amount of paracord. I also keep my BK2 in here, which is just a very good general purpose survival tool, whether you're in the wilderness or in an urban setting. It's going to be able to hold up to pretty much any abuse you can throw at it. I also have a heavy duty Mylar survival blanket, which can also double as a shelter, an adjustable wrench in case I I need to make repairs on my truck or disassemble something. I got some linesman pliers just in case there's barbed wire fencing that ends up in the road because of like a tornado. I can cut through that if necessary. And I have wrapped the head of it in electrical tape just because I don't want it to wear a hole inside of the bag. So in this first small compartment, I kind of have my medical pouch. Inside of here, I got a boo-boo kit and this is just basic stuff, things like band-aids, triple antibiotic ointment medications, mole skin for dealing with blisters, because that's a big deal if you're gonna be on foot a lot. And also have a small bottle that I filled halfway full with iodine. I can add some water to this and then use it as an antiseptic on wounds. I don't have any conditions that would prevent me from being able to use iodine. Also have a couple of uh, handkerchiefs in here or bandanas. Like this is one of those survival bandanas that has all the fun little survival facts on it, which you know all of us probably already know but it is bright orange. It has reflective uh, text on it. So this could be used for signaling in addition to bandaging you up and a bunch of other stuff. Then I also have a camo bandana if I don't really want to stick out. Then I have a ratcheting tourniquet in case me or somebody else gets injured and we're dealing with some heavy bleeding. And I also have a um, Sharpie in here in case I have to apply it. I can write the time that it was applied on that tourniquet. Then I have one of these quick clot trauma packs and this has the quick clot gauze in it which is a little bit different than 
the granules that they started with. I think they changed their formula several years ago. Um, that, once again, is just for dealing with heavy bleeding. Then, not really medical items necessarily, I do have some snacks. Like, I have some Cliff Bars for me. That should keep me going, I mean, for at least a little while. Along with some fruit pouches for my son. Because if you have a kid, you know that probably the best way to get them to be quiet is to put something in their mouth. So that'll keep him fed, keep him happy, keep him quiet if necessary. Then the very front compartment is going to be my hygiene pouch. Like I have some wet wipes in here and be sure to put these in a Ziploc bag, otherwise they will leak. I know because I just found that out. Whoopsie on my part. Then also I do have some hand sanitizer in here as well. And y'all, it's important to remember that a bag like this is just one part of an overall system. It needs to be integrated with like your EDC and your other gear and supplies that you have in your home or in your vehicle. You may have noticed that I don't have something like a camp stove in here. And the reason for that is this is just a short term bag to get me to the rest of that stuff. But if you would like to learn more about off-grid cooking, be sure to check out this video. And I'd once again like to thank Premier Body Armor for sponsoring this video and sending us the bag and the ballistic panel to take a look at. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.